say we're here talking to my man Jay, who's our guest, and um, um. Jay. <laughs> <laughs> but um have you seen wedding crashers jay <laughs> yeah of course okay cool do you remember when he gets called vince bond gets called j bone <laughs> <laughs> he's like how's my protege and he's like j bone <laughs> how was your guys christmas uh not very good camara scored a record tied a record six touchdowns against us so uh it was a little bitter yeah it had the potential to be a great christmas didn't it <laughs> Yeah, at least the Lakers saved us, right, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you guys tell me about uh about your experience in the Christmas game? <clears throat> in a shooter is a man. That's all I gotta say, to be honest with you. He, he can penetrate him. a lot better than I thought. Honestly. What do you mean, like just his acclimation to the Lakers? Is that doing really well, or just his individual talents doing well for us? Like, yeah. What do you What do you say, Jay? To be honest, man, it, I feel like he just spaces the floor just a little bit better. To be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, with LeBron James out there and AD, there's going to be a lot of space open. Um, but yeah. what Dennis Shooter adds, what Rondo doesn't, is scoring. Mm-hmm. A lot of scoring. Like, yeah. I mean, so there was a kind of a buddy up here who uh, just like always liked to talk mess about Rondo, just mm-hmm. saying how he's not a shooter and everything like that. Mm-hmm. I think he's come a long way because if you if people are recalling like his Celtic days or whatever, like, yeah, yeah of course, like he's really worked hard to make himself into a better shooter. Um, and I feel like he can hit it a little bit more than people think, but you're right, man. Like at this stage in his career, even though he's still a decent finisher, Mm -hmm. um, he more, when he drives, he's looking to kick, you know, he's looking to distribute and shooter is like in the prime. He's what? 27, something like that. Like you can tell he's just got young legs and, uh, and he's really crafty in the way he can just attack the creases. Like, I feel like he does a really good job and I'm like, have I always known this about you? But I'm watching up, you know, a little more closely now that he's wearing the purple and gold. I couldn't agree with more with you, man. To be honest, with yeah. You. This is exciting. So Schroeder now he's like a better, younger version than Rondo, who gives us more points. Is what you guys are saying? Yeah, he's not a, as good of a passer, I would say. Rondo has a gift. He's he's a yeah. magical passer. But uh, <laughs> but Schroeder, like he's a as far as passing goes, he he can make things happen. It's not like he's a stiff. You know, he can make things happen. He has younger legs. He plays really well defensively. He can shoot a little bit more consistently, I would say, even though Rondo's improved at that. But he brings us that those young legs, man, and we needed to get younger. I agree, man. With THT yeah. and Kyle Kuzma coming up, like, I feel like we're a problem for the future. Yes, and I wanted to see – so so kind of mad at the Lakers, right? We just lost to Portland. Yeah. Um, yes, it was the second night of a back-to-back. <laughs> neighborhood <laughs> yeah it was just like oh my god this team drives me nuts with McCollum and Lillard drives me nuts he drives me nuts. He, I'm like it's not fair that you can hit from the parking lot but he drives me nuts in the sense that he has a tiny bit of harden in him whereas like as soon as he comes off his screen and feels like a slab of contact he's just like he leans in and throws it up, you know? And I'm like, damn you, because you're a superstar. You're going to get that call. And it just drives me nuts because, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know, you know, what kind of era, you know, you played in type of thing. But I feel like for me growing up, like, I don't know. It was like. No blood, no foul. Yeah, it was just like play the game, you know? Don't manipulate the refs. We don't need to do all that. Like, play the game. Be confident in your skill. And, you know, it's like, I got skills. You got skills. Let's match them and see where it ends up. We don't have to manipulate the refs or we don't have to, you know, kind of play a game within the game. Even though I know LeBron could, you know, argue, you know, a good, like, less – he could argue a good amount of less calls. Like he, yeah, LeBron's, LeBron's one of the ones that we're talking about. We'll be yeah, honest. I'm not saying the one. he's <laughs> the one. <laughs> so he's one of the ones. He's our guy. But um, I know it's so funny because the whole time rooting against him, I'm like, how is that a foul? Blah blah blah. Like LeBron. Blah, blah. Now he's on our team. And I'm like, that's a foul. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So we admit it, but hey, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, but what, just to follow up on that, I, I want to see our young guys like, uh, you know, Schroeder's having a really good game against Portland, yes. but like we couldn't separate from them. You know, like uh, Kuzma didn't do much. I want to see these young guys help our, our older guys, especially with this shortened season, and kind of step in and fill, be those young legs so that we don't have to rely on LeBron playing a tons of, ton of minutes right now. And even AD, who has a strained calf, Kind of looked like he didn't want to be there uh, when we played Portland. But uh, 
exact same thing, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. I did not care. How do you have six points at halftime? And you're one man. It, it just he, doesn't make any sense. He wasn't being assertive. He wasn't confident in his shot. Uh, didn't just, I don't know. I was like, did he have a fight with his girl all night or something? <laughs> or like, you know, like he, he's drained or something? Like, what happened? Do you feel that's consistent with AD where he, I mean, he's obviously a, a, one of our great players, but then he'll just have a weird off game, it seems like. Do you feel like that's a consistent pattern you've seen? Because I'm just scared that like, he's just got too comfortable after winning that championship, to be honest with yes. you. Yes. And so, like, well, he's good not fear going to, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You don't think he's going to, like, put any, like, effort going forward, do you think? Like, he's going to be lackadaisical. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's not like, you know, AD. <laughs> they say it's not really how you respond when you lose. Everyone gets pissed off, right? Everyone's right. going to work harder. Everyone's bench pressing Delaware because you're just thinking about your opponent, like, boo, like, yeah. just thinking about, like, how, like, I'm going to meet up with you and it's going to be a different story. But right. not everyone handles winning the same because yep. some people get complacent, especially AD just got paid, right? So, like, mm, that's a good point. so how do you respond after you win a championship? Because it's way harder to defend it. It's almost like when you have a hit record or you have a hit song, like, no offense, anyone can kind of have a hit, right? Who let the dogs out, whatever the case. Everyone can kind of have a hit here and there. Why do you have a hit on that song? How can you stay (laughs) atop of it, you know, so. (laughs) No, you're totally right. Also with like the, their celebration time is cut way short than normal. So that's a whole, they might still be in that mentality. Like, no, I still want to celebrate this huge accomplishment but it's like, we got to move past that. We got to go to next already. So um, that'll be interesting to see. I hate complacency. Like that's the like number one thing with um, players, you know, it's like, I can't stand that. Yeah. And I'm the same way. It's like, (laughs) yeah, yeah. You get a taste of that championship. Like that should motivate you right there to just like, okay, every year I play, I want this feeling like, but gosh, we're spoiled with having Kobe, Kobe, who just, there was no complacency in his vocabulary, hey, you know? Rest in peace, man. Yes. Rest in peace. It's almost a year. Rest in peace. Hi, uh, and Gigi. And everybody on the plane. That whole crash. That's sad. We are just talking about that. I know. We were just talking about it because it's coming to the, that time. I yeah. saw a video of his, uh, yesterday was the, uh, and yeah, a year to the day where he um, walked into the Staples Center. Last time, I'm sure you know this, but yeah. Um, I actually didn't know it was the anniversary day, so. The actual day. I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was yeah. Um, where he walked in with Gigi, hugs LeBron, you know, it was just cool. to kick yeah. everything off. And um, yeah. Yeah, just the way it goes. But again, we've got Lakers winning a championship for him and hopefully doing good things this season for him. Um, so what what else um, in terms of our new players, like Marcus Gasol, some Love of the Marcus other Saul. one, how is he looking with our team now? Marcus Gasol is going to make us – whole lot better on offense because LeBron does not have to touch the ball whatsoever. So then what is LeBron's going to do more like off ball? Yes, pass and threat. Yeah. Pass and threat. That's yeah. all you really have to do with Marcus All right there, to be honest with you. So what's Marcus All's like biggest strength as a player? Passing. In my passing. opinion, yes. Okay. Passing. Do you think passing too? I mean, I think you're spot on because uh, he's out of his prime as well. Um, he's never all that athletic to begin with. So it's not like we rely on, you know, like – a, a Dwight Howard or even a JaVale McGee's much more athletic than Mark Gasol. But Gasol is kind of like Rondo. He knows the game. He's so damn smart. He knows the game so well. He knows where everyone's going to be. Um, and he just kind of has that, you know, he played in Europe and everything like that. And I'm not to say like American basketball players don't do this, but like he understands the, how to not, he plays very selfishly. And yeah. so like, he's not selfish, not care about his stats or anything like that. He sees the game before it even like kind of like LeBron, they see plays before they even happen. And he's just, he's such a good passer. Um, I feel like unlike Dwight and JaVale, he can occasionally hit the three. It's very <laughs> occasionally, but uh, <laughs> we'll get um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, he just needs to be someone who can help guard some of these big guys. It's not going to be often. If we meet like a Denver, he's got a matchup against Jochich. Um you know, if we meet uh, maybe even like in a New Orleans somehow, you know, he's got a matchup against Steven Adams. So it's just a big body and just protect the basket, man. That's all he has to do. Like dish like you're doing, rebound and protect. And that's all we really need you to do. We don't, didn't bring in here to score or anything like that. So we could have used him instead of AD in our final minutes this last game, the way he was playing. Yeah. You should catch that. <laughs> 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 
Molly, come on. <laughs> I was saying you could argue we could have used Mark Gasol in our final minutes of the last game against the Trailblazers over Anthony uh, Davis. Given his energy and the way he was moving the ball compared to, although AD is great, in that game compared to AD, Mark Gasol should have finished. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know if it like has something to do with the strained calf or. But <laughs> yeah. That's the thing too. It's like okay, okay. Again, we're splitting hairs here. I know, but like Davis, love you, but every time you go down, he rides in pain. Like, can't you one time go down, and <laughs> get up, like get like, like and still be in pain and be like, shit, <laughs> yeah, man, that hurt, and this doesn't feel good. It stings, but like, don't show that. Yeah, it's you just know, the different generation. I think. <laughs> Guys, it's just they show pain. They it was, complain to the refs. It's like just, John Morant, maybe his oh, injury is that. horrific. He's only out three to five weeks, so I'm, I'm not saying it's horrific. It's but like he, he goes out in a wheelchair. I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't pay me to go out in a wheelchair, Paul Pierce. I hate that. <laughs> 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 wait wait can you recap, recap the Paul Pierce thing I can't remember it but what was oh, that I wish we had uh, my buddy Ben he uh, if I was like I was telling Molly a couple months ago I was like if you want a fast track to getting Ben pissed off just bring up Paul Pierce because <laughs> I do he's part- that damn guy being me fancy so thank you for that hit. oh yeah <laughs> love you Ben just not this week <laughs> yeah sorry Ben no, sorry this week no um, yeah I don't it was 2008. They're playing us in the finals. I don't even know what happened. Maybe he twisted ankle. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. He goes out in a wheelchair just to make this brief. Yeah, goes out in a wheelchair, makes a huge scene, and then just tries to do his best rendition of Willis Reed in the mm-hmm. 70s. Well, Willis Reed was actually hurt, but Paul Pierce like comes jogging out of the locker room like he just didn't come off and go off the court in a wheelchair, and then comes and like maybe drops like 12 on us for the remainder of the game or whatever. And I'm, it was just, it was all dramatics. It was just such a Paul Pierce thing to do. <laughs> I, I know. Such a Celtic thing to do. I can, I can see. So, is Paul Pierce one of the players that you hate, Jay? Like the most? Yeah. Who's, Ooh. yeah, what's a player that gets on your nerves right now in the league? We were talking about that in past episodes where I know uh, Jacob and Baker Molly Mayfield. went oh, off wait, on no, Harden <laughs> and went off. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they went off on Baker Mayfield, but in terms of NBA, they went off Baker on. Baker Mayfield? They all, they all I hate him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a stud I, this year, man. He's what? He's a stud this year. Oh, I know you don't believe that. Come on. Come on. He, oh, hasn't, he's, he hasn't listened to the Baker Mayfield. You got to think about this. You got to think about this. His first two, oh, he played three years now? Three, four years? Yeah, this is third year. <laughs> he's a Baker Mayfield uh, expert. Okay. Mom, she used to like him. Now she doesn't. But she might like him again. She said he had a He came to her senses. Jay, you will too. Uh, <laughs> complete confidence. Play, in man. Ten and four this year with with no Odell Beckham, no defense really besides Garrett. I mean, first of all, they they paid to have they probably have the first or second best offensive line. They've paid multiple free agents because Baker's on a rookie contract, so they don't got to no, pay. Oh man, they, no. pay awesome. they have two good tight ends. The best running back tandem in the league. They have the best <laughs> offensive line in the wow. league. They have Miles Garrett on defense. They have they're. Well, they're secondaries. You gotta think about That's all funny. the injuries in that whole COVID situation as well, though, man. Uh, Nick Chubb, he missed six games. So he had, uh, what was it? Uh, Kareem Hunt for two more games after that. So you By the way, think about that. He, he had Nick Chubb and, and Kareem Hunt last week, right? Against the Jets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they got, they got, they lost to the Jets. Hey, no, but hey, you got, like my point, how many people are on the COVID? <laughs> oh yeah so that's okay so that kind of proves my point too because i'm like okay take away his wide receivers and like yeah. you still have your running back t- tandem and oh. you I, I get like not everyone could be aaron Rodgers and you know maybe mahomes or russell wilson but those guys just make anything work yeah yes. mayfield nice. for being a number one overall pick <laughs> i want to see it work it's only his <laughs> third year though how do you feel about sam Darnold? okay so <laughs> Love that Sam Darnold. I thought he should have been the number one pick. He has obviously not been as good as I thought, so I've been a little humbled on that. However, he is basically what Baker Mayfield had to go through on Sunday. Welcome to Sam Darnold's whole life because he is constantly having to overcome his organization being in that because the Jets are constantly in chaos. Yeah. And so yeah. he, yeah, he has to be better, man. You're right. He, his interception, some of his decision making, it's like you got to be better, man. I can't defend you. However, <laughs> um, you know, I don't see Sam Darnold in commercials. 
Um, I don't see Sam Darnold commenting on other players' contract. I don't see Sam Darnold calling out the training staff or his organization. Hey. I mean, this guy is just a fucking joke to me. He's a joke. He did all that this year, though, and now he's 10 and 4. So you got to think about it. He All that request, he, but he's do you successful think, now. Do you think he would be more successful if he didn't do those things? And no. So, no. You think no. that doesn't He has well. to have it his way to win. And that's mm. just my honest opinion. Okay. You think it Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, he has to, he like like many other quarterbacks, to be honest with you, have to have everything perfect. Yes. Yeah. You have to have a, a good O-line. You have to have a good running game. Like you have to have uh, you know, suitable tight ends as like a safety valve. So, yeah, he's similar to other other quarterbacks in that regard, but uh I don't know, for as much as he talks, I just sorry, I I expected more, you know. I, I understand with all those commercials well. And he's he's the fourth best quarterback in his division. Like Lamar Jackson, like Brown's gonna have Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Lamar, Lamar Jackson. Jackson. I'm a Lamar Jackson fan and all, man, but he's overrated. And I'm yeah, how come? Right now, <laughs> is he that could, controversial? I don't know. He just, <laughs> he just can't throw the ball. In my honest opinion, like at all. No, he's a running back. Mm. He's a running back that mm. can hand the ball off. In my honest opinion, see, I respectfully and affectionately disagree <laughs> because I, I don't know, man. I feel like. His strong suit is him running the ball, being a mobile quarterback. But I think, like, I mean, I don't have the stats in front of me, passer rating and stuff like that, all that garbage. But, I mean, just the eye test, like, I'm like, man, he kind of has some, like, some Michael Vick to him. I mean, and I know, like, everyone wants to bring him up in terms of uh, the way he runs the ball. But yeah. those guys, I don't know that I've seen, as far as Lamar Jackson and uh, and Michael Vick, two guys who can just flick their wrists and the ball flies. Like, I don't know, it's pretty to watch. Anyway, so so Baker Mayfield has Lamar Jackson in his division. He has Ben Roethlisberger in his division who, okay, maybe at this juncture you could argue, all right, maybe he's surpassing Big Ben. Big Ben's going to <laughs> But I would, if you ask me today, who would you rather have, Joe Burrow or Baker Mayfield? I'm taking Burrow. And who's Burrow? Joe Burrow for sure in the division. Yeah. Honestly, if I have to start. And there's some, you know how, like, they say, like, you know, you need, obviously, whatever way people swing on politics, they say – we need our president to act presidential. You know how that's a term? Yes. Well, like you need your quarterback to be quarterbackial, <laughs> right? He's the, he's the CEO on the field, right? He's the face of a multi-billion dollar business. Yeah. Um, I can't have you be calling out the training staff. And just because you think you're a little frat boy, you can come up here and start talking about other people's contracts and stuff like that. Shut up, be quarterbackial <laughs> and win games. <laughs> Going back to my original question, who is a player in the NBA that it gets on your nerves? The least, or maybe the, how about the most overrated NBA player right now? I'm going to have to agree with you guys and say James Harden. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, we were going off on about Harden and I, about uh, Kyrie Irving. <laughs> James, uh, Kyrie Irving has skill. I can't lie. Um, but he's yeah. just a little crybaby. Can I cuss in this? Yeah, yeah, you can cuss. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's just a yeah. crazy bitch, to be honest. It's to be honest. Um, yeah. But James Harden, he has no skill. Just that step back. Like, Dude, no team ball whatsoever. Spot on. First of all, Kyrie just did a move when he plays. He just did a move where he, like, went up in the air. I don't know if you guys got the alert on it. And switched hands in the air. Hold on. And I'm like, damn, Kyrie. <laughs> I, I think you're such a weird-ass, just like you said, baby ass bitch person <laughs> oh my god does he know like he's just so good to watch he's so fun to watch like yeah like he switched hands in the middle I, I was it was awesome but yeah to go to to go to that point with Harden uh when people are like it's he's one of the top 10 top 12 scores this league's ever seen I'm like how are you so seduced by his manipulation of the game like his yeah. step backs to travel <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can he shoot? Yeah, he can shoot. But like, I mean, he he gets to the rim at times too. But like, to me, he's nothing special. Like, he gets to the rim and flops, and so he's constantly on the free throw line. And people are like, "That's part of the game." Sure, it's part of the game. But like, again, kind of like a Lillard thing. Lillard doesn't do it as much, obviously. But Harden is there to uh, to sit there and play a game within a game. He he, I don't feel like he's confident enough to just play straight up. Play straight up. Yeah, and that's why he wants to leave Houston to play with other stars to win because he can't win by himself. Yeah, he's really adamant about that, about leaving. Like, he wants to. Stars and it's so there. weird because Houston, like, he's never going to have it as good. He's not going to go to another organization that's going to cater to him. Like, Houston yeah. caters to him and is willing to, like, 
give him a key to the city and he probably already has it or whatever. And, uh, and they've, they've showed a willingness to go get, you know, Westbrook or, or, to, you know, first they got Dwight Howard, Chris Paul. And so they go to out of their way to get him stars and he can't get along with them. And, oh. um, uh, you know, he, he, uh, I don't know. Some people want to argue they were a game, like a game away from uh, beating the Golden State Warriors or whatever. And it's like that, we could play the what if game all day. Yeah. But hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Time out. Time out. So are you from Georgia? No. OK. What makes you I, you have a Braves hat on? I saw. Right. Yes. OK. So uh, do you have family? Are you like is your family from Georgia or something or? Uh, no. To be honest with you, uh, my dad's from Newark, New Jersey. My mom is oh, from okay. California, um, but my dad used to move around a lot. And so when he did get to Georgia for a little bit, he got, got stuff home and that's when I became a fan. Got it. Okay. Okay. So uh, are you – okay, so do you have, like, a soft spot for the Hawks as well? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's just <laughs> raining and talking. All day, man. Vacation all day. Like, <laughs> it's just – no, because I'm like – I think if you take the Falcons and the Vikings and maybe the Chargers – is there any organization or fan base that has experienced more heartache and heartbreak? <laughs> nope. <laughs> For real. Well, we were just talking about too, just like we we're just talking about too. Like, what the what is Vikings' problem? Because like on paper, everything's great. Great. Right. Your defense sucks. It's de- it's inconsistent defense. I'd say it's um it's. Well, again, we're well not to defend us. Here's here's just facts too. We're missing Daniel Hunter. We're missing <laughs> Anthony Barr. We're missing oh. Eric Kendricks. Told you. Um, I told you. Listen to your brother. About what? I told you. I told you. I didn't describe <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's no excuse because with basically we had a star set of defense, say, last year, maybe for the past like four years, you could even say, and I feel like they peaked. So th- coming into this season, I was down with, okay, cycle some of these guys out because it's not working. Get some in, get some of these new guys in. Maybe we need younger legs, uh, different pair of eyes to see the field. I don't know what it was, but – I mean, you could even say at least Falcons. I don't want to talk about '98, by the way, but at least the Falcons <laughs> have like gotten to the. Super, I would say in the last like 25 years, gotten the Super Bowl twice. I don't think it's a coincidence that the Vikings haven't made it. I think there's something from top and how it trickles down, like from the owners. You can say even though we have really good owners, and sort of the Falcons. I'll talk about '98. But like, no one wants to hear about '98 from you either. <laughs> uh, the Broncos. <laughs> but I would say there's something that doesn't precipitate well through the organization. So like, I don't think it's a coincidence. Like there's something not right. There's something that doesn't click from say ownership trickles all the way down to the product on the field. I don't know, man. I like, there has to be a fucking reason why we can't get to the big game. I don't know. What what were you saying that you thought it was? Wait, what do you mean? Coach, right? I think it is the coach. Yeah, do you honestly think it's the coach? Because that's kind of the common denominator that, like, is true. And I love Zimmer so much. There's something about him that I really respect. But do you think it's – you think we need to get a new coach? He hasn't made the playoffs in back-to-back years. Um, uh, He – yeah, I don't know. I I don't know if, like, the game has passed him by. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like – I'm not saying we need one of these young whippersnappers like Cliff Kingsbury on the Cardinals. Like, I mean, he had a losing record in college and stuff like that. I don't, I don't think we need like a Sean. Mc- I don't know what we need, but like, um, maybe the game's passing by. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You're, you're right. Maybe it is beyond what we can see, and it's more of an organizational thing. Did you say that was sort of the problem you see with Falcons and Chargers too? That it was a, it might um, be organizational. More so, Chargers. More so, I would say Falcons maybe. Maybe this season, I can't remember last as much. Chargers find a way to lose. Yeah. They're like, okay, wait, wait. We, our percentage of winning is this. Like, let's do something just astronomical out of the blue to fuck it up and lose the game. Like Falcons, I feel like they they just lost leads. Yeah. They just lost leads at the beginning of games. Like, you know, um, they didn't necessarily, I didn't feel like they found a way to lose necessarily. I just feel like for whatever reason, they just allow teams to make plays at the end on them, you know. Don't want to win. What's that? <laughs> they don't want to win. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the Vikings—they're like I view us as we're not a step-up franchise. Like, if there's a big game yes. on the line, correct. Don't. I don't want to hear. Oh, you're being cynical. You're not rooting for your team. No, I'm just being what history. Like history has shown that like we're not a step-up franchise. So the bigger the game, the less we are going to step up. I feel like we only seem to win if. 
we're the underdog and even then it's not guaranteed but that sort of seems to be the only way we can win and then yeah you're right and then once we get some momentum people want to put us in big games or we get these big opportunities and then squander them yeah we fuck them all up so what do you guys think you guys need to get over the hump I don't even know. I think a new, I think a new quarterback maybe, and or a new offensive line, depending on what the real problem is. But you know what's crazy? Which is probably the offensive line. Huh? <laughs> what? Yeah, well, offensive line is like most teams don't have a good one. It's just so hard to find dudes that big who can be that athletic and be that strong, and then like have the commitment. You know, so yeah. like it's hard to find those big guys. Um, it's even harder to find a quality quarterback because yeah. you can even say you have your quarterback, say like Kyler Murray, like they may not even make the playoffs. If you go back the past five years and check out the first round of quarterbacks taken, there's probably four to five, maybe that you're like, okay, he's the franchise guy. It's so like, I don't know if you've ever seen the camera angle where they show the quarterbacks um, uh, point of view where like he says hype. And it's just, you have all these big ass guys coming to rip your face off. <laughs> Like you have this little pocket. You have to know like, okay, my safety valve is there. Okay, the wide receiver's running a go route. Uh, my X receiver's doing a crossing pass. Like you have to know. So it's it, it's so insane, right? Yeah. And so I don't think it's like, it's so hard to get that position right. And even when you think you do, like it doesn't guarantee you anything. Like Cardinals have their guy, so yet they might not make the playoffs. Like, uh, you know, Jared Goff got to a Super Bowl. He's not playing well. And, and he only does little dink and duck short passes, you know, like, you think about like Josh Allen's finally coming into his own, you know, a little bit more Baker Mayfield, you know, then you have uh, like Lamar Jackson's 0-2 in the playoffs and he's at home games those, those uh, years. And so it's just, I don't know, definitely we can upgrade from Kirk Cousins for sure. Uh, we can also downgrade though, I think. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So that's it's, a good mention. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's kind of 50, 50 with Kirk Cousins. Um, I feel like, he really hasn't played too bad a ball for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, I'm just hard on him. <laughs> I'm very hard on yeah, him. Yeah, no, he could definitely be better in spots, obviously. But he actually hasn't been typical Kirk Cousins, like I feel like maybe last year or the year before. Like, yes. He's been a little bit better. But uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. We draft – like our GM's pretty good. We draft pro bowlers. We draft like all pros, Dalvin Cook. You know, Justin Jefferson sh- maybe should yeah. be a rookie of the year type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> he will. Yeah, I just think, like, a franchise quarterback, it's such an anomaly, really. Like, you get guys like Mahomes, that's kind of, he's probably our next Tom Brady, right? They come around every once in a blue moon. Like, you have your Big Bens, your Drew Brees. I mean, maybe even Aaron Rodgers, you could argue, like, they're good enough to get you to that Super Bowl, but really how many Super Bowls do they actually have in comparison to a Tom Brady and I hate to well, say Rogers it. Rodgers only has one. That's what I'm saying. Like Mahomes, I hate to say it, it's going to be the next that probably ends up with like five or six, but it's such an anomaly. So it's so hard to sit here and say, <laughs> you know, what quarterback? Like, yeah. I don't know. For me as a Bronco fan, I'm like, okay, I want Dak Prescott. I feel like every year I want a new quarterback. And I realize at the end of the day, like, unless it's hard. you're, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Stars have to align for you to win. Yeah. That's, I think that's it exactly. Is Dak Prescott leaving the Dallas Cowboys? He better be. <laughs> I think so. He's a free agent. They can franchise tag him again. But since he is a free agent, he can turn down that franchise tag. He can turn down any contract offered by them. And I do think that there's going to be other teams out there that are going to give him a pretty dollar, even if the Cowboys match. I think Dak's been disrespected enough to where he would decide to leave Dallas. I hope he does. I mean, uh, Go to me. <laughs> come over to Atlanta. We can make a trade happen. <laughs> I mean, yeah. how do you feel about your situation? How do you like? How do you feel about your team right now? Like, what what are what are ways you guys need to pivot? You guys, Gurley is good for eight games, and then he kind of his knee is tinkering off. Matt Ryan seems to always be better. Like, they seem to always be down, so he's always throwing a ton, racking up yards and stuff. But what what do you say? To be honest, man, I think it's time to press the reset button for us too. Um, I feel like we're just old and beat up. Julio yeah. Jones itself, he's a great wide receiver. Always, dude, always a hamstring too, right? Yes. <laughs> always a hamstring. Like. It's time. And then we have old ass Todd Gurley. You know, he can't even play eight games. He played six games, if that. It's yeah, he's uh, it's he's that player where, like, at this point in his career, which I think this might, I mean, he he looks solid when the season starts, and then obviously as the season goes on and wears and wears you out and wears you down, like he just his body can't hang. Just dropped off. That makes no sense to be honest with you. And dude, that's honestly like, ah, that's a good point. 
I remember talking, uh, thinking about Atlanta the last couple of years. Has there been a team more decimated with injuries than your team? Like you guys, your defense is like Keanu Neal's always, Casey's always out. Uh, like when you guys had True Font, I don't know if you guys still have True Font. Um, just like everybody is always hurt for your team and specifically your defense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said it all. I mean, he <laughs> we can't stay healthy. So, yeah. Why Do you think that? I should keep Raheem Morris? I like him a lot, actually. But yeah. I still think that I still think that we need a new head coach, to be honest with you. Yeah, I was going to say, if not everyone can stay healthy, then at that point, does that mean the head coach is not – you can't blame the coach for that, though. But, I mean, you think he's, like it's – like, it's a, a bad uh, – like, he's – what am I trying to say? Like he's overworking them in practice or not making sure that they're taking care of themselves. Like, is that I his think job? Need a new strength and conditioning coach, maybe. Yeah, I blame strength and conditioning coach. I would start with the strength and conditioning coach, fire him, probably. Yes, yes. Maybe that's what I haven't already. Maybe they did make that move. I don't know. But, uh, okay. um, I didn't know there was a strength and conditioning coach. So, but that makes sense. <laughs> it's coach for everything. <laughs> yeah. Actually, back to Lakers, if we can. I wanted to ask, because I'll be honest, I haven't watched much of the, of the games, just like highlights here and there, but not even the full highlights. Uh -huh. so I know last time we like talked in depth about Lakers preseason, Kuzma wasn't looking, at, according to you guys, you know, like his normal self. Uh -huh. Has he stepped it up since? Well, that's kind of what I was saying. I wanted him to take over. I want to see him take, I want to see him take over. He did one game. I want to see him take over. I want to see maybe if you have to give a Kobe face, you know? <laughs> it's not working. Oh, it's not working. It does. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, I want to see him take over. I don't think he has enough grit, man. Mm. I just don't think that's his role. Like, it, mm. if you have, like, a LeBron James and an Anthony Davis, and then now you have a Dennis Schroeder, like, you got to think about it. Like, now he's considered a fourth option now. Like, you have three other guys that can consistently score 20-plus points a night for you. So if you really think about it, Kyle Kuzma is just that extra factor. So, yeah, we want to see him produce a little bit more and score more points itself. But at the end of the day, like, we have to factor all that other situation in where, like, if he actually gets 12 points a night, that's actually pretty good for us. No, you're right. You're right. I guess what I'm saying is I want to see him take over on the nights where like, if AD does have a strain calf, it's like, okay, let's sit his ass because we can get Kuzma in there to take over the game. Or like we have a big lead, let's just say, um, going into the fourth quarter, we're up 15 or something like, I want to see Kuzma balloon that lead to 25 and, and, and keep it. And let's sit our, sit our LeBron, sit our ADs, sit our, our veterans so that, you know, when playoff time comes and it, it's good conditioning for Kuzma. It's like, get in that role of like trying to make yourself a closer, even though we don't need you necessarily to be, but like in those moments where you can be show it to us. Yeah. I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. It was like our last game, right? AD looked like he didn't even want to be on the court and Schroeder stepped up and I'm like, cool. I'm glad, I'm glad Schroeder can. We know Schroeder can. Like to me, that's where we needed Kuzma to step in and have a bigger role. And he couldn't do that for us. And that's what I want, like Kuzma, Harrell, and Schroeder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those guys should be able to be our Minnesotas, be our, uh, well, the West is pretty damn stacked. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, you know, that's what I'd like to see ideally. I feel you. Kuzma, you know, I'm a huge fan of Kuzma. So it's just like, I feel like he has that ability. So you think he's just, he showed it his rookie yeah, year. Yeah, right. Like, the, exactly. The coming in, like, it's kind of killed his confidence or like his swag. I don't know if he needs swagger. I don't know. But like, I feel like he, awesome. he has some grit. He would, he like Jay, he doesn't go and try to dunk on guys. Like oh. he, his rookie year, he wanted to attack and he wanted to serve up a facial. I just feel like it's less <laughs> ball touches though, at the end of the day. Like yeah. he has less opportunities to show us what he could actually showcase us. If you put him on another bad team, yeah, you never know if he can showcase that same situation oh, again. Damn, dude, it's like the inner the opportunities he does get, they're not. He's not efficient. And I just I, I don't I, know. Man. <laughs> well, I wonder if it's what know. you were saying, where it's like. So he has this weird um, opportunity right now to, like you said, when the veterans are um, taking a break or when we have a lead, then he can show him his, you know, that he can rise to the occasion. But it's not, if we're in a lead, it's not that stress factor. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a real situation. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, like, he's that type of player where it's just like, you need to be put in that real thing where it's do or die. Or... He does better when he starts. I'll say that. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, I wonder if it's like that, where it's like, where if we're in the lead, it's like, you're not- I think when we beat Minnesota, he started and had 14 points in like the first quarter or the first half or some crazy shit, but then he only ended up with 20. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if he, yeah, there's something going on, like with all of what you guys are saying with like, maybe like him playing with the veterans, like it does put him yeah. in a different place and different lane where he feels he he can or he should- kind of scale back I don't know yeah, and maybe I mean as a young guy you're coming in next thing you know you have LeBron James to look yeah, yeah. and you have Anthony Davis to your right and it's like maybe it's kind of intimidating like should I shoot here like what if I miss or those guys gonna be mad at me I don't know man it could be some psychological stuff but right and Ricky year uh, you know he had um those young guys around him too like Clarkson and Lonzo Ball yeah. where maybe it like you know, when you're, maybe he was trying to show off for them or trying to, I don't know, maybe that like pepped him up. But then if you're just the young kid with all these veterans, maybe it does like make you recluse in your back. Yeah, play. perhaps. I have no problems with like his character. I think he's a, like, I know, I like there's a reason why we love him where, you know, he's a good guy. He's, like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's good for like team chemistry, like in the locker room yeah. and stuff being that like youthful guy. Um, but yeah, just would love to see that grit from Kuzma. I know he has it. I know he has a skill. You're right. And so I remember Ricky Year just being like, seeing all his potential and be like, oh my gosh, he might be our like, next. Like, Ricky Year, he was like, I'm the 27th pick. Like, and he walked into the league like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm going to yeah. dunk on you. I'm going to hook shot on you. And I'm going to drain in your face. Yeah, it's nice to have someone like that to rely on as a backup, you know? Mm-hmm. Is yeah, he considered he could, our sixth man right now? Like, he could, yeah, he could own yeah. the bench, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, him and Harold could own the bench. Like, they come out that he could be our Lou Williams, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. With better decision making. <laughs> yeah so uh, I and I keep bringing this up only because I know you say it's not a rivalry but I keep bringing it up because I have a co-worker who's a Clippers fan oh, and very vocal guy. I won't talk about him but I will just talk about the Clippers a little bit I just want to know or get your guys opinion I know you guys are never really worried about them but now that they're kind of winning more we're losing okay, a little we're bit place Clippers <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's having a fantasy, um, my work fantasy, and that guy's name is Clip. Yeah. I mean, I know I got fifth place, but I got screwed. <laughs> I was hosed. <laughs> it's because you're my brother, all right? <laughs> they know. I swear they switched the scoring methods or some shit on me in the playoffs. They probably did. <laughs> you have that commissioner eyes. So you probably saw it. But just given that, do you think, just given how everything is right now with the Clippers, um, like their record, I know it's super, super, super early, but seeing how Clippers look, seeing how we look, do you think there's any cause for concern? Lakers in six. <laughs> this is Clippers. This is, let me, let me draw uh, the Clippers very easy for everybody. They, they are down by a historic amount, like, what was it, 50 or 57? 57. Yeah, like 50 or 57 at halftime. Either way, it's not like it, like <laughs> it's down in the 50s. Um, and then they end up losing by 50. Paul George was asked about it, says it's no big deal. It's one game. Like, no. Like, if you're on, if I'm on your team, I'm like getting emotional about it. And I'm like, probably like going to say some shit gets me fined or something like that. Cause I'm just like, no, that's fucking unacceptable. Yeah. We should never, ever, ever be down by that much and then, like, have it sustain. And just, like, I don't care if we're missing one of our best players or not. I don't give a shit. Like, that is not a standard we can ever stoop to. It's not a, It's not acceptable. Like, I want to apologize. I feel like I'm going <laughs> to return my game check. I want to apologize to my organization, my coach, and my fans because today I'm ashamed to be part of this team. <laughs> Damn. Damn. But, okay, wait, who did they uh, lose to by that much? Who do you say it was? Dallas. Dallas. Team we beat on Christmas. Dallas. No big deal. Oh. <laughs> a team that has Luka Doncic, who I would say is in my top five. If but we're Dallas. saying, like, best current players right now, he's in my top five. Top three for me. Oh, yeah, see? Okay, Jay, what, who's your top five NBA players right now? Oh. I know I put you on the spot, so if you need time. I think you can. Right now? Yeah. Do you need some time? Uh, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> including all the injuries and stuff like that i'm gonna have to say kd's number one i'm sorry <laughs> i'm gonna put uh ad number two mm-hmm. bra number three just because age for shot or i would have to put sorry it's kind of hard <laughs> yeah mm, that's hard yo Kyrie, Kyrie's not a top five player anymore he's the because everybody's just so banged up and hurt so it's just kind of hard to factor everything in but you got to throw Kawhi at four and number five, you got probably 
Mm. Steph Curry? Mm. Ours are very close. I didn't rank mine. I basically like I played Space Jam where I'm like, say aliens came from all the like some, you know, somewhere. And we're like, hey, we're about to take your guys' talent or shit. We're about to take your world. We're going to play you in a game of basketball for it. <laughs> Go round up your top five, like and then yeah. go round up our top five to go beat, you know, aliens to save our, our world. So I would say in no particular order, Anthony Davis, LeBron, Giannis, Steph Curry, and Luka Doncic would be my five to send out there. Giannis has no skill, man. I'm right there with James Harden. Giannis has no skill whatsoever. He just- His length, man, is a skill in itself. His length alters alters people's games yeah. it uh it, obviously like he can cover ground like very easily uh i feel like he can almost get to half court with you know two and a half steps you know because everyone can travel in the nba <laughs> uh, yeah, what's that about <laughs> just he needs to be a better he needs to be a better shooter he's kind of like lamar jackson they get to the playoffs and uh they need to find a way to win yeah but notice i did leave Kawhi off the list <laughs> Kawhi's not top five in your opinion at all not for me why is that I feel like you wouldn't even have a title in Toronto if, if injuries didn't happen. And I know I even said on this podcast that <laughs> no. we can play the what if game all day or whatever. That's facts though. I think Kawhi is overrated. I don't think he's as good of a shooter. He's not a, he's not a pure shooter, obviously he he's good at mid range and he's good at defense. I question Kawhi's heart to be honest with you. That's what I question. <laughs> Got it. Load management, man. Yeah, the load management uh-huh. shit. Like uh-huh. that drive, like you want to have another trigger for me. Load management. <laughs> like, man, give me your skill. Give me your skill and let me play basketball for a living. Like, I'll be out there, you know, I'll I'll play doubles. Like we can do a double header, I'll play back to back. Like to to load manage and shit like that. I just think like, and again, depending on kind of the era, like I grew up watching Jordan and kind of the Golden Greats, like Stockton Malone, who didn't miss games, you know. Um People, it was a badge of honor to play 82 games, and that's what you did. Do you think the NBA now is getting more? I mean, it's obviously getting softer in that respect, but do you think it's getting more? Like, it feels like it's getting scripted, in my honor. Yeah, I was gonna say like a business. Like, it's more like it's acting more like a business. Like how we were talking about earlier with. Um, was it Lillard you guys are saying? And like LeBron's really um, guilty of, you know, manipulating the refs. Yeah. Like in Lillard too. Yeah. It's like, Oh, very top five. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Lillard on the top five. (laughs) They got to remove one. It's got to stay five. You would knock Steph Curry out for. Dave Miller for sure. Hmm. Interesting. All right. But um, what was I going to say? But yeah. So like, I feel like it's a, it's now a business and now, players are using the refs as part of their play instead of like, instead of an obstacle you have right. to deal with. Like I, like I, how I saw refs, you know, it was like, they what, use it. I know what you're trying to say. And um, yeah, I am to. it's because uh, I feel players have brands now and like social media, mm. just shit like that. Like players want to build their brand. They want to get their endorsements. It's soft in, in two ways too. It's soft because all these guys know each other from AAU. We're like watching in the nineties, like Knicks and Heat, like want to fucking show up after the game, do something about it. So all these guys are like friends. So they get on the court and it's like, oh, what's up? Like, you know, and like, oh, yeah, you know, it's so it's soft regarding that. And and I would say it's soft because there's so much money in the NBA as opposed to obviously generations that came before them. So yeah, yeah. guys like in the maybe not even seven, like eighties, nineties, early two thousands are not liking the other players because they're really competing to get that paper. And so like, there's so much money now, like guys can get paid by doing like, you know, YouTube or it can be Baker Mayfield. You don't even have to win games and you're in 17 progressive commercials. Like you don't even got to do shit. Ten and four. Shit. Tebow even won. Uh, Tebow. <laughs> Wasn't he a great quarterback? Like, like, a great human being. I love him. <laughs> a lousy quarterback. Oh, on the <laughs> Good thing Molly's on the phone. She'd be like, wait. Trash. Oh, he was? I thought that I thought he was good. And then he wasn't like him to his Christian. Because he he had like a six or seven game winning streak and he kept saying, like, I give all my glory to God, which I'm not making fun of him. I'm just saying like it made people have this like outer body experience with like the power above, or if you know, like people are like, shit, God's really um pushing this guy and he's a rookie and like holy shit. And so uh, he gets in the playoffs and beats the Steelers on the first play of overtime. And, uh, and it just like, so it just created this, like, it's kind of like Lynn Sanity, if you recall. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I do recall. That was, what happened to that? That was New really... York City, man. Jeremy Lin, what happened to him? <laughs> He's back. Signed with uh, the Warriors. It actually what? didn't go through because something about paperwork. Yeah, I thought it was horseshit. I love Jeremy Lin. Love him. How's that? Have you ever heard of a trade not going through because of paperwork? Chris Paul, Lakers. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Fuck that guy. <laughs> well, uh, that was more because remember the, the NBA owned the Hornets at the time? Yeah. And when we traded Chris Paul, like the owner of the Cavs and Mark Cuban of the Mavs, who I love on Shark Tank, but owner of the Mavs, <laughs> writes a letter to David Stern, like the champions are going to get like, we're just like, there was a few owners complaining. And then they're like, this is a conflict of interest because you own the NBA owns the league. So you just want to segue Chris Paul, like in his prime to the late, the best, you know, the franchise that always wins and stuff like that. So um, it was part of that, but there was, damn, there was a free agent not too long ago that. Or oh. something happened where like the paperwork didn't go was wrong or didn't go through or whatever. You talk about Bogman or uh with um Milwaukee, right? Oh Bogdanovich. Yeah. Yeah. Bogdan. <laughs> the paperwork, something something happened with paperwork Bogdan and or Bog, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Bojan Bogdan Bogdanovich. <laughs> there's a Bogdanovich on Utah and then there's a Bogdanovich on Atlanta. Yeah. So like two random Euro guys with the last name Bogdanovich. It's like what the hell? <laughs> Oh, wow. That's going to confuse me going forward. So what are their first names? They have different first names, right? Bogdan and Bojan. Or oh, Bo- what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, anyway. <laughs> Bogdanovich. I've never, <laughs> I've never heard of uh, like paperwork problems, like a clerical issue with the trade. That's it. I'm changing his name. I'm just calling him Bougie going forward. And I'm not even <laughs> When it comes to his first name, I'm not even going to try him. Just call him Bougie Bogdanovich. I think that's sweet. <laughs> that's a cool name. So which one is Bougie? Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> shit, they're both really good. <laughs> Watch. Look up the guy in Utah. Because <laughs> he's a little which bit older. Which one's Bougie? Older and which one's everything. Bougie so, and which one's Bougie? The one that's Bougie is the one with uh, Utah. <laughs> 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 I didn't do that expecting <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you to say that. Wait. I mean, it's true though. Yeah, who's Bougie? Bougie was the one from Utah. No, Bougie. Bougie is the guy from Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, he's a little, he's a little younger, so he gets yeah. Bougie. Bougie. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. He's Atlanta's Bougie. a little more balder, so you know he's yeah. gonna get the. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm not gonna ever remember this guy's name. Just his nicknames that we give him. So Jay, we already got you penciled into our fantasy uh, league next year. Buddy. Yeah. Cool. Sign me up right now. For real. Right now. You're not gonna like him. He's kind of good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you. Yeah, he knows. He knows it. He uh, he's pretty good. So <laughs> I've warned you that <laughs> the person I bring might win the whole. Thing. Yeah, we have a really cool league. Like it's competitive and stuff, but like it's all and just like we're a bunch of just goofs and I don't know. Pretty much, yeah. So who's in for fantasy? Who's in our championship? Who's so it's gonna be Anna, who this is our eighth season, and Anna somehow is in the championship for the fourth time. So half of our league, she's been in the championship. She hasn't won it yet, though. So that oh, she's really? like super bitter about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyway, she plays, she plays Ben. And Ben, well, this is his first Super Bowl in eight years. Ben's one of our originals. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll root for you then. You know what? Okay. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> so you and then there's me. I'm playing for uh, the Consolation Championship. <laughs> I, well, I'm not playing for Ed. <laughs> well, you're, no, you're playing for third place. Hey, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Play, uh, you're playing Molly. Molly oh, lost. Molly okay. lost to Anna. Am I so, the third or fourth? Exactly. Yeah. So you're playing the third place game. So definitely uh, check <laughs> check your lineup. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> Nothing. Golly, Molly, <laughs> Miss Molly. <laughs> Good, Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get a bookie. No. Oh my gosh. You're gonna get a bookie. I'm gonna get a bookie. The kind that you meet in parking lots. <laughs> Yeah, during this time too. That's, that's savage. I'm gonna get good at betting, and that may be my full time job. Damn, some people do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're called mafiosos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and they do it. Oh man, well, shit. It's really hard to do a podcast in like 45 minutes. I mean, I know like 40 of those 45 minutes was me talking shit about Baker Mayfield because there's so many. <laughs> But next time we'll have to carve out more time. We're not up against the clock since. Are you guys gonna watch the Lakers? Yes. 
for sure. Yes, please. The listeners, we're cutting this short because we're going to go run and watch the Laker game, which is in four minutes. Jay, you're welcome back. It was a really good conversation. We want to get to know you more. I hope you had fun. I appreciate it. Come back. and uh, We got to get to know Jay's um, basketball history more. He played uh, um, all through high school and some college, so he knows some stuff. Oh, hell yeah. We're out in college. Just Oxnard College. (laughs) Bro, don't you ever downplay that. (laughs) (laughs) Basketball, that's the shit. Right? Right? Isn't that fucking dope? We didn't play post high school, so we're like, so bad. Yeah. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you guys still yeah. could if you guys really wanted to, to be honest with you. Yeah, Jake, get up in there. Go stand for a call, damn it. <laughs> Dude, I, I was like sitting in my computer chair and I like leaned back and to pop my back and I forget like that's not a good way to do that. And literally I'm sitting there running my back like all tightens up. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> oh, no. What is this? So. I have seen Jake play in some adult leagues, and I'll say I respect that you treat it like a fucking high school championship every time. <laughs> in terms of your play, but not, but you also you keep it chill and fun. But your play is, is hard. Yeah, <laughs> hard for me to just go out there and like my okay. dick around, you know. I gotta play hard. Yeah, <laughs> Jake's the same way. He can't. We'll have to, we'll have to lace him up, man. We do. She's always talking about you, man. I Kayla's used to, uh, you know, she saw me in my prime. So. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> and if you remember like jason williams right like uh i was kind of like that kind of player my coaches always got on me they're like quit hot dog knit or whatever but i just like I just, I just i just love to uh i don't know i just like i love to pass and so like man i watching jason kidd growing up and jason williams and steve nash and stuff like that like so, you know obviously you've seen highlights of magic johnson like i just would see those passes and i thought that was way cooler Cause like I couldn't dunk or anything like that. So I was like, so I thought in my opinion, that was like those sweet passes were like everything I wanted to try to emulate. And like, so yeah, sometimes it, you know, every so often it wouldn't work out and you do look like a bum when you throw behind the back pass when you could have just made the easy bounce pass, but you threw behind the back pass or behind your head type of thing. And it goes to, you know, the cheerleaders and you're like, shit, I, uh, I'm going to hear about that from coach. Yeah, I was going to ask you to go off on you and you're like, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's so it's pretty exciting to do a really fun pass though. I've done those a few times and sometimes yeah. where I didn't think I was gonna make the pass because it was so risky, but when you do, it's so it is a an exciting thrill. Yeah. Were you a shooting guard man? <laughs> She's got a dunk it, Hobie. Yeah, I was a shooting guard. Shooting guard. Yeah, I was. What about you? I would say I would say shooting guard. I had to kind of take up a point at times. Uh at times, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we definitely have to play for sure, then, man. Well, yeah, what, man. We'll have what to are we playing? Dude, have you ever been? Have you ever uh, been to Oregon? Nope. Okay. It's about that too. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'd like to do that. We uh, he loves Lake Tahoe, which is you know kind of <laughs> basically Oregon. <laughs> yeah, which you know, yeah, and Oregon's really pretty. Portland's really pretty. So, but yeah, we have to figure that out. Maybe we could. Yeah, man. If anything, uh, all the way out there just to. All you up, man. <laughs> oh, wow. Better, better make it count then. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, well, Laker game has started. We will end yes. this. But I think we should do a part two with Jay and really get to know, two. Get to know him. I appreciate you guys having me. Yeah. yeah man. No, we appreciate uh, you carving out some time. Always, man. Anytime. Anytime. Right on, man. We'll hope your Falcons uh, close out the season. You guys got uh, Carolina? Or is it Carolina next week? No, no, no. You're right. You got Tampa Bay. My bad. Tampa, Tampa, Bay. Tampa Bay. That's an L. You can, uh, you can <laughs> boil their chances. We have Detroit, so it doesn't even matter. So um, We're not in playoff contention, right? So it doesn't no. matter. We're out. Damn. All right, let's go watch this game. It better. I'm yeah. coming back. So I want to see, you know, see some okay. fresh. Any, Any, yeah, that's your prediction. What? Let's get our predictions for this. I'm going to write like this game. down right now. <laughs> okay. Here. Do you want to... Predictions? <laughs> My prediction, LeBron drops 35. 36. 36? And that was Molly? All yeah, because right. it's his 36th birthday. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He needs to be consistent. That's valid prediction. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's your prediction? Uh, hold on, come back to me. All right, what's your prediction, Jacob? <laughs> I'll say Lakers in seven. Okay. Or, right, well, by seven. All right. Cool. I'll, say, I'll say Lakers by five. By five. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And you say by 12. Yeah. Okay. 12? <laughs> uh, I hope he wins. <laughs> no, I know. Part of me would not be mad if he won. <laughs> yeah. You said by fire. Yeah. All right, let's go watch the game. <laughs>
All right. Um, we'll see who wins. <laughs> you're, if, you're right, man. We're getting you the bookie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and then we're going to take your bets and uh, you can, you know, score us big time. Yeah, that's really what this prediction's all about, is who's going to go to the bookie. It's all to, yeah, uh, precursor to uh, you know, <laughs> getting into uh, hardcore gambling. What else are we gonna do? Let's let's gambling. pick up a new vice, guys. Come on, we see what we can do together. <laughs> Shark, call me. <laughs> All right, go Lakers. Bye. Everybody. All right, have a good night, you guys.